Hello, this is Pat Harrell from the Chromex Tech Support Department with another installment of our Tips and Tricks for ColorThink. Tips and Tricks in 5 Minutes or Less. This one I call An Introduction to the Worksheet. The Life and Death of a Pixel. The worksheet is a sometimes neglected part of ColorThink Pro. I, I think it's so open-ended that it's a little hard to know where to start. In its most basic use, the worksheet can be used to emulate your printing workflow and then show you what's happening to your color all along the way. Steve calls this following the life and death of a pixel. So let's start off with an image. This is an RGB image and it might have a profile attached to it or it might not. If you're viewing it on your display in Photoshop, then you're looking at the image in the working space profile in Photoshop, say Adobe RGB. Let's say you're a photographer and you're wanting to soft proof this image like you do in Photoshop. The image starts in Adobe RGB. It is rendered to the printer color space in RGB. But that's not the end of the story. In order for Photoshop to show you the colors as rendered to the printer, the colors have to come back through the same profile in the proofing direction, the A to B direction. Now this is easy in ColorThink. You just click and drag the icon down to the image and it'll apply the profile next in the workflow. Technically now, the final transformation is that the image is run through the monitor profile on your display. In reality, if you're already looking at ColorThink Pro on your display, then you're already seeing the colors as presented through the monitor profiles view. You don't really need this last step, or, or at least you would not expect to see any difference here between these two. Let's try another workflow. More like a process at a print shop. Your client, again, may hand you a RGB image without a profile. If your prepress department assumes that this is in the Adobe RGB space, then you can treat it that way. To track a modest number of pixels, you can lay out a grid to sample across the image, any size you want. I'll keep it very small, like five by two, but you can make it any size. And maybe we're particularly interested in flesh tones. So I'll sample some extra pixels across the arms and face. So I have the image, the profile representing the color space it is in when it's in pre-press, and I have some numbers on specific pixels. If we're going to print this on our press, we can bring in that profile. The image will go through a profile connection space like lab and the press profile will convert it into device values, CMYK. You can see the image changes as a result of the conversion. All right, now what's the proofing workflow if we're going to proof what we're sending to the press? The image is in press color space but since the proofer is a different device, it will require different CMYK values in order to attain the same colors, right? So these icons in ColorThink can be dragged and dropped, just like a file. So I drop this right on the image and it adds the next transform. To proof, we need to run the color through the press profile again in the A to B or proofing direction and put it into a profile connection space again. And then we can apply the proofing paper profile to the image and it will convert from lab to CMYK. Now we have device values again in order to print onto the proofing printer. When you hear people talking about round tripping a profile, that's what we're doing here with the press profile. B to A and then A to B, both directions through the profile. At any point, you can call up the Delta E comparison to see what the changes are in the workflow. If you want to know how big a change will happen from pre-press to press output, you go here. If you want to know the entire workflow, you can pull it out to here. 
If you want to verify that your proofing workflow will match pretty close to what you get off your press, you can compare them here. Now these lab values are very close, showing you that your proof is going to be close to your press. If you'll notice, we're going right through your workflow like reading a book from left to right. Each step of the way, you can see what profile is involved, which rendering intent is used for the transform, how the image changes, and you can see changes to sampled sections of the image. Whatever workflow you have going on at your place, you might just learn a lot by laying it all out in the worksheet. Join us next time for Tips and Tricks with ColorThink.